I've been thinking about doing this for a while. So I thought that I would talk about depression today, which means I'm gonna talk about my personal connection with depression. So let's get a few things straight. First of all, when you're depressed, you have zero energy, zero. So I'll literally lie in bed at night too scared to fall asleep because I'm afraid that I'm wasting time. I will sit on the couch and fall asleep a cold noodle from my empty bowl of ramen sitting in my mouth. I'm like a mama bear protecting her young, except instead of me protecting my young, I'm protecting my Netflix password. So that's point number one. Number two, emotions are a lot of work. Having them means that you're not dead. But having them also means that you are a disaster. Having emotions means crying into your husband's lap because you spilt milk on the counter. Crying because I'm out of gas. Screaming because someone took the last Oreo out of the double-filled Oreo box. Crying when in Futurama there's that dog that waits around for a lifetime waiting for Fry to come back and then he dies and then he's this little cement dog all by himself and he's lived such a sad life. Another thing I worry about, I'm either hungry all the time or I'm never hungry at all. I can go an entire two days without being hungry a little bit. And then as soon as something really negative happens in my life, I can't stop eating. It's like, ooh, look at that ice cream over there. That looks yummy. I'll eat two liters, please. Ice cream sales are the best and worst thing ever. And get lots and lots of amazing ice cream that I love for very, very cheap. But then I eat it all in one sitting. That's not on the list of things that I want to do today. Don't do that. Don't eat whole barrels of ice cream in one sitting. When I'm super upset, my dogs know exactly what's going on. They think, oh, mom, if I lick your face, then everything will be better. No, it's not going to be better. You're not going to pay my rent. So go away. Uh, lick your butt somewhere else. And I'm floating away with the frivolous things that I actually think matters, like what it looked like when I tripped down the escalator. How when I cry in public, I feel like a hippo that's been burnt alive. I'd rather be burnt alive. So I take a lot of medication and that's how I survive. This is it. Hear that? That's drugs. And it's pretty much the only reason why I can leave the house to socialize or really do anything. And it's pretty much the only thing that helps me sleep at night. Suicide is a real problem. With Jake Paul, Logan Paul, and the stupid suicide forest thing happening, it's a shit show. And there's Logan Paul talking about, oh, let's have suicide awareness. This is bad. This is this. But the thing is, is that the person that he showed in the woods was a real person. And suicide is something that I have thought about. Suicide is something that I have tried to plan. Suicide is something that I think about on a daily basis. And it's not because I don't love my life. It's not because I don't want to live. It's because my brain won't let me think of anything else. So instead of me thinking about that homework that I'm supposed to finish or that deadline I have at work, I'm thinking about how many ways I can kill myself. There's a lot of really, really interesting ways that you can die. Did you know that the substance that they put in your veins when they kill you when you're being executed is potassium chloride and you can actually make it from regular homemade materials? I mean, you can also make a bomb from homemade materials, but that's aside the point. Regardless, suicide is a big problem. Nothing I do ever feels like it's good enough. I will work hours and hours on a project and I will still think that I am a piece of shit and I still think that I'm a piece of shit and when I'm done this video I will think I'm a piece of shit but that doesn't mean the world stops turning. Despite the fact that I always try not to hurt people, the people who get hurt the most and get hurt first are the people that I love. So my husband, my mom, my dad, my brother, my friends, my dogs they get hurt because of my depression. And it's something that I have no control over because despite the fact that I work my ass off at trying not to be a crazy person, this brain has a mind of its own. Get it? <laughs> That's another thing. You will find anything you can to explain why you feel the way you do. When you're depressed, you're like a drug addict, except that the thing you crave is attention. I'm not trying to make people who are depressed seem like they're complaining. I'm not trying to make it sound like people who are depressed and suicidal are just looking for attention because they're not. But I'm telling you that people who are depressed 
crave it, or at least I do. If I'm feeling especially down, the best thing for me is knowing that someone actually gives a shit about me. So I'll ask Brian over and over and over again, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Uh, yeah, I married you. No shit. But it's not obvious to me. It, it, it doesn't register. When you see someone who's depressed and you see that they're doing something out of the ordinary, they're doing something ridiculous, they're doing something over the top, it's a cry for help. They need you to be the person to go up to them and say, hey, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Because honestly, if I had someone telling me that every single day, I would be a lot less depressed. And if I had someone tell me that when I was going through some of the darkest periods of my life, I probably would have never even thought of suicide. But that's not the world I live in. So that's that. Peace.